are going to start by looking at how we schedule Google Meets within a calendar, how we can create nicknamed Meets, and finally, we'll wrap up with a Google Meet integration in Google Classroom. So I'm in my Google Calendar, and all I need to do is just click on a day. When I do that, it's going to bring up an event, and I'm able to add a title to that event. as well as a time. Now, keep in mind that this time is really just for your calendar. That does not mean that a person could not join the meet before or stay in the meet after. So keep that in mind. Google Calendar meets are um, never ending. They'll continue to be on there. Even if you delete the calendar event, uh, a student, a parent, a teacher could go back in their browsing history and go back to that Google Meet. So that's just something to keep in mind as you're scheduling these Google Meets. And then all I need to do here is click Add Google Meet Video Conferencing. It's going to create that URL for me right here. If I click that little arrow, I'm going to get my meeting ID. I'm going to get phone numbers as well. And I'm able to then share that information with whoever needs it. So that's creating a Google Meet inside of Google Calendar. I can also go to meet.google.com and create a brand new Meet. And this is what we do when we want to create something called a nicknamed meeting. Nicknamed meetings can only be started by teachers. And if the teacher is the last one to leave the meeting, then students are not able to rejoin that Meet. I'm going to say that again. If the teacher is the last one to, to leave the meeting, students will not be able to rejoin the meet. So all I need to do here to create a nicknamed meeting is just click this join or start a meet. And then I come up with my own nickname. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to say TSC dash Margison. And I would then tell my students at, you know, 1130, Go ahead to meet.google.com and type in tsc margison Once I click continue, I'm on this page where my meeting is going to begin. If I'm sitting on this page here, students can technically join the meet because I have started it. If I don't want students to join without me being there, I don't want to be on this page. I don't want to just sit on this page. Once I'm ready, I can click join now and we'll get to that in a second. But this is where I'm kind of in a waiting room sort of where I can turn off my camera, turn off my microphone, um, check my audio settings and things like that before I actually get into the meet. But please keep in mind that if you're sitting on this page, you, are, you have technically started the meet and so students would be able to join it. The last place that we're gonna go to is classroom.google.com and I'm in my Google Classroom here. I'm gonna come up to the top right hand corner and click on the settings. And if I scroll down in this general area here, I can turn on and off Google Meet for my students. So they're going to get this code here, and I'll show you where that shows up for them as well. I can also make this invisible to the students so they wouldn't see it. This will act like a nicknamed meeting though. If a student, even if I have it visible to them, let's just make it visible, and I click Save, Students are able to go into our Google Classroom and they'll see this meet link here. If they click on the link, they will get a little warning. So to show you what that looks like, I'm in my son's account right now and he can see this meet link here. And if he clicks on that link, he will get this. It'll just let him know that the teacher hasn't started the meeting yet. And then if I go back in as the teacher and I start the meeting, then he will be able to join it. Next, we're going to look at what a meeting looks like for a participant. So I'm going to click join now. And I'll be put into my Google Meet. So the first thing that comes up, because I'm the one that started it, is any join information that I have. So I can copy this here. I can also add people from this screen. Along the bottom, if there was a nickname or if I added any information, that will show up here. So the next button here is my microphone, and I'm able to turn that on and off there as well. 
There is a keyboard shortcut, Control D will turn your microphone on and off within Google Meet. I can leave the call. Notice that it doesn't say end the call, it just says leave the call. If I'm the last person to leave and this was a nicknamed meeting or a meeting from Google Classroom, it will end the meeting officially. And then the, the final icon I have here is turning on my camera or turning off my camera. And that keyboard shortcut is Control E. Next we have captions. Those are gonna be by user. So each student would need to turn on their own captions and they'll see those um, show up at the bottom of their screen as someone is talking. We'll talk about presenting in just a second. And then the final um, options I have here on the right hand side are the three dots. This is where I'm able to record my meeting if it's something that I'd like to share with students later. When I record the meeting, it will record whatever is being presented and me as the presenter. But it would also, um, if I'm not presenting anything, it will also just record me. I can change the layout here and there are several different layout options. Sidebar, Spotlight, and Tiled. Tiled, I believe, will go up to 16. Next, we have Full Screen, which will just um, take the Google Meet and put it into full screen mode. I'm also able to turn on captions here. If I'm having any issues with my video, I can change the settings in this area. I can change what microphone is being picked up. I can also change my video quality. So this is good if you have spotty internet and you might need to lower the quality of video that's coming through, but you'd still like to be able to see some video, you're able to change the resolution on that video. And then finally, we can use phone for audio and get any help from this menu as well. On the right hand side at the top, I'm going to see a list of the people that have joined. I'm going to see my chat window, the time, and myself. So I've joined the meeting as my son and you can see if he had his webcam on, this would be his picture right here. So if I come back up to the top and I say show everyone, this is where I'm going to get a list of the people that are currently in the meeting. If I click on a name, I'm able to pin that person to the screen, which means that for me, it's going to keep that person front and center the entire time. This is really nice if you're looking at um, somebody is going to be presenting or even just to tell your students or your families that when they get into the meeting, they should click on your name and pin you to the screen. So that way they never lose you. The next thing here is if Tyler's microphone wasn't muted, I would be able to mute him here. And then finally, I'm able to remove him from the meeting. If I remove him from the meeting though, he is able to get back in. Just keep that in mind. It's not like a closed door. Um, he is able to get back in and we can work out um, some system if a student is abusing that power. Next, I have my chat and this is where we're able to send messages back and forth within that Google Meet. Messages will be tagged with the um, name of the person. Students are not able to change their name because that is pulled from their Google account, so there's no issues there. When you're ready to present during a Google Meet, there are three options to do so. You can share your entire screen, which would be helpful if you're going to be using maybe the Windows Ink workspace um, or anything on your desktop that will show the entire screen. And there's no uh, issues with switching between windows or anything like that. So that will share your entire screen. The second option is to present just a window and that will present just a Chrome window. It will still allow you to switch between tabs, but it won't actually show anything on your desktop. So this is nice if you're just going to be showing web-based tools during your presentation. And then finally, you're able to, to present a single Chrome tab. And this is really the only way and the best way for you to present video or audio and any animations that you might be showing. If you switch between tabs when you're presenting only a single tab, it will prompt you to present that tab then.
As students are joining your meeting, one thing that our team has found helpful is to have a welcome slide up. This slide could ask the students a question, something about their day. It could ask them to do certain tasks and then ask them to introduce themselves in the chat or it could ask them to fill out a Google form. There are several different ways that you can welcome the students to the Google Meet and get them to participate within the content. Again, using the chat is really helpful and it really um, breaks down the barrier of students being comfortable with being in the chat. You can also say things like, make sure you mute your microphone, turn on closed captioning if you need it, anything like that, any little reminders, and it allows you to nicely welcome the students to this new virtual space. Finally, there are several ways to engage students. Um, in addition to using the Google Meet chat, we can do activities within Google Slides. We can use Kahoot, Jamboard, and don't forget that your laptop is touchscreen. So as I mentioned earlier, you are able to use that Windows Ink workspace or the Epson interactive tools. There's a lot of things that you can do with just presenting your screen from Google Meet and then still engaging students in several different activities to keep them connected to the content. Thanks for watching this webinar. As always, if you have any questions, you can contact the Connected Learning team at clteam at tsc.k12.in.us.